I love that the term emulsification was assigned to me as this is a culinary technique that I employ in my kitchen every single morning when preparing my coffee. In the last few years, I've experimented with a few dairy-free alternatives in my coffee and my favorite one so far has easily become cacao butter, which is richly decadent and a nice treat on weekends in particular. Um, but as we all know, fat or oil does not mix well with water or water-based liquids such as coffee. Therefore, if I want my cacao butter and my coffee to mix well together, I will have to emulsify it. So as you can see, we can see that the fat is floating at the top. The cacao butter is going to melt in this. And to emulsify it though, I'm going to put it in my stainless steel, not plastic, uh, Vitamix so that uh, the heat of the coffee does not melt the plastic. Pour it in here. Just get a little bit more coffee. And you can see it float at the top. And once I turn it on. <laughs> Emulsification is the process of dispersing two or more immiscible or non-mixable liquids, such as the melted cacao butter with the coffee, to form a semi-stable mixture, such as we can see now that I've used my blender to mix up the cacao butter with the coffee. Best way to start my weekend. There are three different types of emulsions. The one that I did for my morning coffee is considered a temporary emulsion in the sense that this combo will eventually separate. It is the same when creating a vinaigrette composed of oil and vinegar, for example. We can shake it. We can shake it and break the oil and vinegar into teeny tiny droplets that can remain suspended in the solution. However, this is just temporary because the combo of oil and vinegar cannot dissolve in each other to form a uniform homogeneous solution. Usually we make a vinaigrette right before serving it immediately on a salad. A tip that I learned when researching the science behind emulsification is that smaller droplet sizes does help to prevent the solution from breaking. So using a blender or food processor to break the oil into tiny fat globules can be useful. Another fun fact that I learned from the Masterclass website uh, is that when using vinaigrette for salads, we should make sure to dry our lettuce thoroughly because water will repel the oily vinaigrette, forcing the sauce to the bottom of the bowl rather than coating the leaves. The second type of emulsion is a semi-permanent one. Hollandaise sauce is one of the most popular example of this type of emulsion. The physical agitation of whisking in the butter into the egg and liquid mixture helps to break the fat into smaller droplets. This allows the water and fat to mix together in an emulsion sauce. These two things ensure that the ingredients stay smooth and do not separate for a few hours. However, because Hollandaise is, Hollandaise is a sauce that is made and served warm, the molecules move around more and bump into one another, causing the separation chain to reaction to start, leading eventually to a broken sauce. And also, once the sauce cools down to a certain temperature, the butter fat will solidify, also causing the sauce to break, thus a temporary emulsion. Finally, the third type of emulsion is a permanent one. Mayo or aioli are two popular examples of permanent emulsions. In the lesson plan I included with this video, I suggest making aioli with students. So let's try making that right now. First thing we're going to do is add two eggs. Oh, yeah. Egg yolk contains lecithin, which is an emulsifier. That means that lecithin can attract both liquid and oil and hold them together. It coats the oil droplets and stops the liquid and fat separating out. We're then going to add half a teaspoon of dry mustard, which also helps to bind the ingredients together. We're also gonna do half a teaspoon of salt. 
the juice of one lemon. And finally, to make aioli, oil is whisked gradually into the liquid egg yolk until it forms a stable, creamy, yellow suspension. I chose to use two third cup of garlic infused olive oil rather than olive oil and garlic cloves, which is another option. And now we have thick, creamy, permanent emulsion aioli to serve with french fries or other food. Here's the final product, a nice thick creamy aioli, nicely emulsified.